Daniels. Thank you for talking to All India Radio. Thank you. Uh, just a little insight into your film. Well, it's a film about a young Danish photographer. Um, so it's based on a true story. A young Danish photographer with the name Daniel Rye, who in 2012, right at the beginning of the Syrian war, went into Syria to, uh, to try to follow, follow a family outside of the war zone to see how the war would change their lives. And uh, unfortunately, he got kidnapped by a group that was affiliated with them. Um, what later became ISIS. And he ended up being in captivity for 13 months. Um, and he was treated quite brutally. Uh, and the one thing that kind of saved his mental, um, what do you call it, um, saneness, so you say, was that he ended up in a cell with the American hostage, uh, James Foley. And uh, James Foley became like an older brother to him. And James Foley had been uh, captured before. So he was experienced in, in surviving this kind of ordeal. And uh, he helped Daniel to restore his sanity in that sense. Um, and at the same time, the film is following uh, Daniel's family in Denmark in their really, really desperate attempt to try to raise money uh, through fundraising to get uh, to get their son and brother out of uh, captivity. So it's a very emotional, tense film. Uh, what were the challenges, if any, either creative or bureaucratic? Because uh, generally when uh, we say ISIS, it kind of tends to raise uh, red flags. Were there any challenges that you faced as a filmmaker? Well, I think that, uh, you know, you have the usual challenges of time and budget money and all of that. But, uh, but I think that the biggest challenge for me was that <coughs> the film was based on a really, really good book uh, by a Danish journalist, Puk Damsgaard. And it, but the, of course, the book was based on real people's lives. Uh, some of them was dead and, uh, you know, some of them were alive and the families were alive. And it was very, um, it was very important to us to try to, you know, be delicate and make a film that the survivors, uh, the families uh, would, you know, would um, support and be happy about because I had absolutely no intention of exposing them to any more pain and, and uh, hardship that they already gone through. For those of us who are listeners and viewers, um, the name um, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo um, is also a film uh, that uh, you uh, helmed. And uh, how was that experience? Well, I, was, I mean, it's quite different than Daniel. Of course, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo was based on an on a international bestseller. Although I will say when we started the process of the screenplay, plotting out the film and all of that, the success of the book was not as big as uh, it was a success in Sweden. It had started to spill into the other Scandinavian countries and just about to start selling in Europe. But So one of the challenges was that the expectations and the success, the, the success of the book grew and grew and grew and the expectations for the film grew and grew but the budget stayed at the same <laughs> because the budget was determined when nobody knew that the film was going to be a big hit so we actually ended up shooting this film for five and a half to six million dollars it's a two and a half hour feature film with you know a lot of uh, crazy stuff going on um, and it became you know the biggest Scandinavian film ever uh, so uh, it's the biggest box office hit for and it's one of the biggest European films, uh, I think only surpassed by um, the French film Untouchables that came out a couple of years, some years ago. So, so it was a challenge to shoot something that um, difficult, you know, um, car chases and people getting hung and violence and nudity in, the, in that amount of time. But, uh, but also, uh, uh, you know, an experience that definitely transformed uh, my life totally because of the success of the film. Uh, we sold the same amount of tickets in Scandinavia as Titanic. Wow. So, uh, so it was actually kind of in a way, I felt I had to leave Denmark to take challenges in the United States before I then could come back and shoot Danish film. Because when you sell that many tickets, the expectations are for your next film is ridiculous. So in some ways, it was better to go to America 
and uh, take the twist with American filmmaking, which is a whole different ball game, I would say. You know what rhymes with Hollywood, right? It's called Bollywood. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I could have gone to Bollywood, but I went to Hollywood. <laughs> but do we have a chance of uh, seeing your work over here? But I mean, uh, yeah, I think it would be uh, never know, say awesome, never. Awesome to shoot an Indian film. But I mean, I, I, you know, it's always say, do you know enough cultural about a place that you could uh, shoot a film here? Um, but I do think the the Bollywood genre is very fun. But you know, would I come here and try to shoot something and then fuck it all up? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> or sure. I might make a big hit. Well, you, you know, you never can tell. Super nice sing, yes. singing and dancing and all of that. But but I think that um, you know, this is my first time in India. Um, and my you know at all, and I think that. There's a different spirit here. There's a very warm, people are very warm. There's a great hospitality. Uh, you know, uh, it's it's quite different feeling than uh, people in the United States and the West. Um, they are also stuck up and anal, but here in India, people seem generally more enjoying life and happy, which is definitely something that could get me to go to Bollywood. Well, on behalf of all the Indians who are watching this, I'm going to say Shukriya, which means thank you. Thank you Shukriya. Long and uh, uh, Namaste. Thank, thank you in uh, Danish. Long yeah. tak. <laughs> and uh, uh, wish you all success uh, in all your future endeavors. Niels, lovely talking to you. Thank you for talking to All India Radio. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye.